Hey everyone, welcome to Malleus Gaming, I'm your host Malleus, and today in Total Tactics, we're going to be looking further into real-life pike-and-shot warfare by learning about the Dutch reforms of the 17th century. We'll be briefly going over the real-life history of Maurice of Nassau and his reorganization of the Dutch military, and then try to apply these tactics to Total War Warhammer 3. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as it will really help the channel grow and appease the YouTube algorithm gods. Now, let's get to it. The battlefields of Europe during the late 16th and early 17th centuries were dominated by Spain and the might of their elite Tessio units. During this time, the Netherlands found itself under Spanish rule but unrest in the region would eventually give rise to the Eighty Years' War, or the Dutch Revolt. One of the most famous figures that arose during the Dutch War for Independence was Maurice of Nassau, who, upon being made Captain General of the Dutch military in 1587, remade the armed forces of the Netherlands into a professional and disciplined army able to rival the Spanish on the battlefield. Maurice was an avid student of antiquity, and drew inspiration from the military writings of the ancient Romans. These manuals led to him emphasizing the need for a high level of discipline within a standing army that could be called upon to serve in the field at all times. Additionally, he sought to standardize the training and equipment of his forces, so all units within the army were familiar with the required tactics and gear, regardless of where they came from. Further inspiration was drawn from the Romans' tactics and military organization. Maurice sought to replicate the flexibility of the Roman legions in order to overcome the larger, unwieldy battle formations common in his time, such as the Spanish Tercios. As a result, Dutch regiments were reorganized into smaller battalions. Each battalion would have a corps of pikemen in the center, with firearms along the flanks, as well as forming a skirmish line along the front. These battalions would typically deploy in three lines of battle, staggered apart to resemble a checkerboard. This allowed the different battalions to support each other during a battle and greatly resembled the Roman triplex axes, or triple array. Let's see if we can put all of this into practice then. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time around. We're going to start off by showing a battle with a standard checkerboard formation and then another with a Dutch battalion's formation. We'll then compare the two, and see how they fare. The army composition will be one Arc Lector, one Fire Wizard, two Reichsguard, four Halberdiers, nine Hand Gunners, and three Great Cannons. The Greenskins we'll be facing consist of an Orc Warboss on a Wyvern, an Orc Shaman, two units of Black Orcs, two units of Trolls, two Goblin Doom Divers, three Orc Biggins, two Orc Boar Boys, four Orc Arr Boys, and two Goblin Wolf Riders. There's a lot of units there. So here we are, starting off with a fairly standard checkerboard formation. We've got Goblin Doom Divers already bombarding us, cannon shooting back, doing some counter-battery fire. You see the Orc Cavalry coming in on the flanks. Their shaman is bombarding us with spells as already. Here we are, the lines have gotten a bit closer, we're getting some good shots off. The hand gunners have got two lines of them. We've got trolls and black orcs and big guns coming in. Our halberd line is going to be pretty hard pressed. They've also got orc R boys shooting at us. None of our units uh, have shields, so that's going to be problematic. Trolls coming in, a war boss flying in on his wyvern, but the halberds are holding off pretty well. They even managed to catch a unit of big guns on the flank there. Some of the hand gunners are taking some significant casualties though from the orc boys. Alright, we can see here the battle lines are uh, still holding up pretty well. The war boss has gotten into the secondary lines, though. Oh, well, actually, it's the tertiary line. He has taken a lot of damage, though. The 
orcs have been fleeing, but they're coming back for another go. Including the war boss, he's uh, flying away now. You might notice, though, that the second line of handgunners isn't really doing much firing at this point. Their lines of sight are, uh, have been completely blocked. There we go. We can see that most of the orc army has been destroyed. My halberds have taken a significant beating, though. army is just about on the verge of uh, routing. Just one last final vindictive spell on their part. The cavalry coming in to route those last archers, and there's the army route. Let's see how we did. Okay, so we can see here the checkerboards coming in with 611 kills, 365 losses. Three of the halberd units took uh, pretty significant casualties. Two of the handgunners also, they seem to sort of get caught up in the action there. They took about 50% uh, of their health as well. Overall though, not too bad. Checkerboard is probably one of the, um, probably one of the best standards to set up your army with. It's uh, very adaptable and very flexible and lets your units get some pretty good lines of fire. Let's see how the Dutch Battalion's formation fares in comparison. So here we have a Dutch Battalion's formation. We've got halberds flanked and screened by handgunners. The left battalion is already being bombarded by the Orc Shaman. Orcs are advancing. The cannons are once again going to be doing anti- uh, artillery fire, shooting on their goblin doom divers. The orc cavalry is coming around the flanks. I don't know what exactly happened here, but I managed to mix up the left and right battalions with the cavalry, trying to move them to sort of intercept the enemy cavalry. Got them split apart eventually. My cavalry will be heading in on the flanks, and here come the orcs, getting some good volleys off. The trolls are definitely going to be a problem. I'm sending in the halberds on the left battalion to meet the trolls, as well as the general. Doing fairly well. A lot of the orc melee units have taken significant damage from firepower already, though the orc war boss is uh, swooping in now. Trolls are routing at the left battalion. Now let's see the right battalion. Halberds going in. They've taken damage from the enemy archers, but intercepting these orc biggins. Wizard getting splatted by a goblin there. We got some good flank shots off on these, uh, I can't tell what they are from here, <laughs> I think they're big ones. And we got handgunners being attacked by black orcs, but holding surprisingly well. I, since they're on defensive stance, a lot of the units are actually firing their guns point blank. The middle battalion's doing fairly well, seeing off their fight. The right battalion, a lot of their handgunners have been engaged by, uh, looks like Goblin Wolf Riders, but those have been seen off. We are taking a significant amount of casualties from the Orc Archers, which is annoying. <laughs> We've got some handgunners flanking in on the Black Orcs, but we got hit by an enemy spell. It looks like both units are going to be routing. Orc Warboss is seeing off a handgunner unit. Center's doing pretty well. More Goblin Doom Divers coming in. The right battalion's halberds ran off to uh, like chase after some units. The left battalion's a bit of a mess, not going to lie. <laughs> Looks 
like we got a cheeky burning head spell off on the archers, and we got some more goblin wolf riders coming in. They are getting flank shotted from another unit of handgunners, though, so they won't be too much of a problem. Looks like we're focusing down now on the orc war boss, who has been a thorn in my side this whole battle. Trolls are back, causing chaos. Handgunners routing my warlord, who's being attacked by trolls, but we got knights coming in to help him out. There's the orc shaman running about. Looks like the army is about to rout. Yep, that looks about it. Let's see how this Dutch battalion's formation ended up doing in comparison to the Trekker board. Okay, so taking a look at these results, the Dutch battalions are coming in with 605 kills, 331 losses. One halberd unit almost got completely destroyed. One is at 50%. The two others, though, uh, they are, they did pretty well. One handgunner unit is just under 50%, while another is just over 50%. Overall, though, did pretty well compared to the checkerboard. I'd say, like, I'd say they're pretty comparable. I will say, when compared to the checkerboard formation, the Dutch battalions was a little bit more of a hassle to micro, although it did look pretty cool. Overall, though, I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. It did pretty well compared to the checkerboard, so just another little tool in the arsenal, I'd say. I'm actually quite surprised at how well the Dutch battalions worked. I consider the checkerboard formation to be one of the most efficient formations you can use, and the Dutch formations actually seem to work just as well. It did just a tiny amount less damage, but took slightly fewer casualties when compared to the checkerboard. The damage it did take seemed a little more spread out across the units as well, apart from that one poor halberd unit that almost got destroyed. Considering the Dutch battalions were pretty much made to counter the Spanish Tercios, it performed really well against an onrushing horde of strong melee units, backed up by cavalry, range, and artillery. Overall, I'd consider this quite usable for campaign, as it seems equal to the ever-reliable checkerboard. I'd love to see how it can be refined further, so let me know what you all think on how we can improve this. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this further look into pike and shot tactics. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as it will really help out the channel. I also really want to thank you all, as the channel recently hit 3,500 subscribers. I can't believe how quickly it's been growing. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, see anything you disagree with, or have any tips of your own, post them in the comments. You can find my socials in the description below, including my Twitch at Malleus Gaming. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!